Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yas Naoi. Uh, thank you for joining my session against early in the morning. Uh, I'm excited and happy to see you uh, in person uh, since 2019 in Seattle and Amsterdam. So let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Yas. I'm a chief architect uh, working at Docomo Innovations in Palo Alto, which is a Silicon Valley office of entity Docomo. Uh, Docomo is the largest mobile company carrier in Japan. Almost a half of the population of the Japanese people are using uh, Docomo's uh, smartphone, such as uh, iPhone and Android. My expertise is cloud, DevOps, and agile software development. I'm leading a cloud project in Docomo in Silicon Valley. I've been involved in Drupal community uh, 17 years. So here is our team. Our team members are globally distributed in California, in India, and Japan. Our cloud team is designed as a completely virtual, so team is sustainable during the past hard time. So this is what we are developing. We have built Cloud Orchestrator as an open source project based on Drupal. So you can search Drupal Cloud Orchestrator. So this is one stop portal, which is capable to manage multiple clouds, such as AWS, Kubernetes, OpenStack, VMware, and Chaffon. So I can show you the, some screen here. So this is the uh, Cloud Orchestrator login screen. And then it's very hard to move the uh, mouse cursor here and then login. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the uh, Cloud Orchestrator uh, uh, landing screen, and uh, you can see the map, and uh, we, can con uh, we can see the, uh, some icon in uh, some location like uh, Kubernetes, or here, uh, OpenStack, and AWS here, and uh, when I click, it's very hard, sorry. Uh, here, um, I can see, yeah, so, sorry, from here, it's very hard to see. But we can list up the, uh, our resource in the cloud by using the uh, cloud orchestrator. And then, actually, well, I wanted to you show you the uh, Oregon region that's in a, you know, AWS data center here. But <laughs> I cannot see the uh, detail here from here, uh, from my uh, podium, so. Um, but anyway, well, we can manage uh, AWS Kubernetes through the uh, cloud orchestrator. This is based on entire, you know, Drupal based. Okay, back to PowerPoint. So uh, here's today's agenda. So first, I will talk about the development model. And the second, uh, what's B hat for BDD, which stands for behavior-driven development. A third, a templating for BHAT, uh, test scenarios. And the last three, automate testing for BDD. Before I dive into BDD, uh, let me start with software development model. To understand the position of design, coding, and testing, I'll introduce this V model for SDLC, which stands for Software Development Life Cycle, because it is easy to explain about the relationships among design, coding, and test phases. Of course, you know, it's not like you know, aligned to the agile development, but basically the basic concept uh, in agile development, it's almost the same. Then the uh, software development starts with getting business requirements from our customers and also system requirements. And then we can move on to software component design. 
Actually, thanks to Drupal Core framework, I do believe that we can design the component architecture with our minimum efforts. After that, we proceed with the function design, then coding implementation. On the other side of design phases, we have unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and acceptance testing. Those design and testing phases are corresponding to each other like this. So we handle TDD, which stands for test-driven development at the bottom position. BDD aims systems requirements as a system testing. ATDD, which stands for acceptance test-driven development, covers business requirements. We have a couple of testing types like this, such as TDD, BDD, and ATDD. In Drupal, PHP unit, as known as simple test, covers unit testing and integration testing. We can achieve BDD by B hat and the Drupal extension that I explain from now on. I think you could understand the position of TDD and the BDD relationship. So let us dive into BDD. So first of all, uh, let me show the PHP unit code like this. So do you understand what's going on uh, called this code? On the other hand, this is BDD test scenario code. The same question in the previous slide, do you figure out what this BDD test scenario code will do. So we can read and un understand the test scenario um, because it is written in our English language, not programming code. Actually, this is programming code, but you know, this is a natural English language. So the point is, once we write a test scenario in our natural language, we had to run the uh, test scenario as written in the code. This, this is a beauty of BDD. The learning curve is not so steep to learn about how to write a test scenario. So non-tech people like our product manager or uh, project product owner can also write the test scenario. One of our team members who has non-technical background. Actually, her major is digital art. She's joining our Cloud Orchestrator development project and helping us to write the BDD testing scenarios. So remember the V model of SDLC. Actually, uh, we can convert business requirements or system requirements such as a user stories to BDD test scenario as it is like this. So what's B hat? The short answer is that we can test our web uh, site by virtual browser by using B hat command. Here is a long answer in detail. B hat is the test suite framework for BDD which consists of several components. In BHAT, we have feature files that is a set of test scenarios written by so-called Gherkin syntax. And we install some extensions, libraries, to support Drupal and Drash, and the browser testing by web drivers. So we will use some extensions for Drupal website testing. The BHAT command invokes WebDriver for Chromium web browser, and the Chrome driver calls the native API of headless browser, which means virtual browser without any GUI. So this headless browser is actually just a process on our operating system. And then this virtual browser accesses to the, the actual website for AUT application under test site. 
In our case, uh, we are developing Cloud Orchestrator, so we want to test our live Cloud Orchestrator site by BHAT command with Chromium uh, headless browser. So how we can write the BHAT BDD test scenario? So let me move on to Gherkin syntax. Gherkin is widely used in a variety of programming languages other than BHAT in PHP, like a Python, Ruby, or Java in BDD. Starting from keyword feature on the top of this testing scenario that we call a feature file, describe the, the overview of this test scenario, and then start, start the keyword scenario, writing actual commands to access to the website, like login as anonymous user with the keyword given, I'm not logged in. When I visit slash clouds, then I should be on slash user slash login URL. And I should see login header. When we start the keyword given, it represents the initial state and condition, starting the keyword when it makes BHAT take the actual action to the virtual browser, the keyword then, and checks the expected results. So we understand how to write the uh, test scenario by Gherkin syntax. It's so simple. The rule is very limited. Then soon I had a question, can I use parameters? Because the test scenario looks a static. We want to give some variables into our test scenarios. The answer is yes. We can write, uh, we can include the parameter in a test scenario, starting with a keyword, scenario outline. So we can give the variable parameter into test scenario like this. The green bracket words are placeholder, uh, corresponding to the table header column below. In this example, there are three rows in a table so that BHAT will repeat this test scenario three times by changing the values of the placeholders automatically. Then my next question came up, how it works by natural language? So pre, uh, in the past, I I joined some BHAT session in a Drupal.com, but uh, always I wonder uh, how, well, why the, this natural language executes the uh, PHP code or virtual browser. So here's the answer. Uh, actually, Mink extension and Drupal extension PHP libraries working with the BHAT command defines a certain programming logic in PHP like this. The trick is that the method header includes the keyword at symbol and given and the sentence in this example. So BHAT analyzes the comment header of PHP code and then BHAT processes two files together. One is test scenario called features by Gherkin syntax like natural language that I uh, introduced the other one is PHP code as a program logic like this. So here is the example of associating with a parameter in the sentence and a, va a variable in the code. We can include a parameter as the placeholder in the sentence and uh, the logic can take over parameter as the variable into function method arguments. So we can even define the sentence using a regular expression. So maybe you have a quick question. Do we need to write PHP testing code in each conditions, actions, and assertions like this? Thanks to Mink extension and Drupal extension PHP libraries for BHAT, actually we don't have to write this kind of lots of PHP code because 
Those extension libraries already define most of major operations for web access, such as input text field, channel checkbox, click a link, and so on. Uh, we have the uh, more than 100, 120, 140 predefined uh, operation for a uh, website by using the uh, uh, link extension and Drupal extension. So most of the cases, we don't have to write this kind of the complex PHP testing code, just to write the natural language, Gherkin syntax test scenario. So we can use BHAT out of box. However, I wasn't satisfied with the scenario outline scheme because we need to give the hard-coded parameters into the table in the scenario outline because we need to give the hard-coded um, into the table in a, a scenario outline. What if we want to put credential, such as a username and a password, or API token into our test scenarios? In that case, can we publish our test scenario as an open source to Drupal.org for our cloud accelerator? So we decided to develop the preprocessor of the test scenario based on Twig template. We developed the preprocessor for Twig templating for feature files. By using our custom drash command, double brackets will be replaced into some values from uh, separate YAML files. So we developed a pr uh, templating preprocessor. So okay, uh, it looks we pre prepared everything that we need. So let me explain how we automate it. So first, we built our Docker container as a, a BDD testing client. It downloads our cloud accelerator source code, including test scenario templates from the Drupal.org Git repository. And our team could publish our test scenario without placing our own credentials to access to our backend system, such as AWS or Kubernetes because these are just Twig templates without any credential, or concrete hard-coded parameters. So we run the Docker container, and it runs preprocessor of uh, templating by drash command. First, it reads YAML files, which contains parameter mapping that we stores on our local file system for such as a credential and a secret. So this private uh, file, like uh, in this example, private underscore params.yaml uh, file includes the uh, credential. We separate, because we separated the secret and the credential into the, our local file system. And then replace the double bracket variables to actual values defined in the YAML files generate the actual feature files into the design directory, and then now we can run bhat command. In our case, we execute run underscore bhat.sh command, which also kicks Chromium headless virtual browser. So the bhat executes the uh, BDD tests based on uh, synthesized feature files and we can get the output. So now, uh, we want to automate the test process for daily automate testing. We are using GitLab CI/CD pipeline. We have already done with our automated testing for TDD. Thanks to Drupal community, uh, we can test our code on the Drupal.org every time we push the code but we want to have the same one like automated testing system on Drupal.org because in the past, unfortunately, we faced some problem that the, this automated testing system had been broken that stopped our development. So we built exactly the same CI/CD pipeline like a Drupal.org. 
by using a private GitHub repository in our project. So by the way, uh, here are the architecture basics of uh, GitHub CI/CD pipeline. We have the developers in our teams, and the GitHub CI/CD pipeline consists of two parts. One is GitHub master hosted by GitHub as, a so, uh, as software as a service. The other, the other one is GitHub runners. GitHub master has a GitHub repository, and it has functionality of CI-CD pipeline. GitHub CI-CD pipeline system invokes GitHub runners to process a certain test. We can set up multiple GitHub runners like this diagram. GitHub runners are in, in other, GitHub runners are, in other words, those are workers, actually. In that way, we can run our test parallelly. Therefore, we can schedule multiple test scenarios independently at the same time. Also, GitLab has its own container registry like Docker Hub. When a do develop developer push the code to the uh, Git repository, the GitLab CI/CD pipeline detects the repository state and the event that is source is pushed, for example, and the GitLab CI/CD pipeline pulls a container from the container registry at the testing environment, including BHAT test suite. And then deploy the container to each runner, then start the test parallelly. So that's the story of the uh, CI-CD pipeline automation. And here is our actual de deployment diagram using Amazon EC2 for uh, GitHub runners. So also, uh, the test result is notified to our Slack channel. So how we can build CI-CD pipeline? So very simple. Describe the pipeline definition in one YAML file like this. Then put that file to the root directory onto your branch. That, that, that's it. So that's the story of our automation. So, okay, so let me show some demos for BHAT and the CICD pipeline. Uh, let, me, let me try to show the console. Okay. So let me log in my testing environment. Check. Let me see. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so uh, when we well specify the uh, patch link from the Jupyter.org, and uh, when I well just you know type the command and enter, uh, so what um, this uh, command is doing is you know take the uh, uh, patch file from the Jupyter.org GitLab repository, uh, 
with the uh, uh, latest code of our cloud orchestrator source code, and then apply patch into the uh, latest the head of the uh, our repository, and it takes the uh, one one minute, and then uh, it will push to the uh, uh, our private GitLab CI/CD pipeline. So now it is cloning the uh, latest code from the uh, our uh, Jupyter.org uh, repository and then uh, apply the patch. Oops. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me just to check the uh, link. And while we, oh, I lost the the uh, console. Okay, it's, it's uh, hard to see from here, so uh, let me go back to the uh, uh, PowerPoint slide. Sorry about that. Okay, then, um, so uh, here is the uh, uh, lesson that we learned. So we forked the Drupal extension and adding our own custom actions for the, the scenarios, such as login processes, take a s screenshot in case of testing uh, failures, Test for table rows, assertion of uh, success status messages. So these are what we implemented because the functionalities were not enough based on ex existing VHAT extension libraries. Here are the known issue and solutions. Uh, if you are interested in handling those issues, um, please let us discuss on uh, offline. So in the last part of my presentation, I'll give you where to find our solution. Basically, our script to automate BHAT is including our cloud module in Drupal.org, and our custom Drupal extension is open to our GitHub repository. So also uh, visit our website and learn about the cloud oxidator, and also subscribe to YouTube channel. Uh, please contact me if you want to use a cloud orchestrator in your uh, uh, project or organi organization. Uh, any development contributions are welcome at, at cloud project in uh, Drupal.org. So that's all. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Hives. Um, hypers. Hypers. Oh. Yeah. oh, no, no. Uh, yeah, we just uh, take the uh, B hat. You know, I, we didn't uh, ex have some other experience about the uh, other framework.
Yes, we want to do that, but uh, we just um, finished the uh, automation of the uh, our V hat with the uh, just a desktop version. Yeah, and then also I didn't mention about the uh, you know the uh, web driver uh, web browser. Uh, we switched from Selenium driver to Chrome uh, Chrome driver because the uh, you know our team um, has some experience about the uh, some performance. Uh, issue about the uh, Selenium driver. It's very slow, and then it makes the uh, less productivity. So we use the uh, Chrome driver. It's more faster. Yeah, but you know, the, as the next step, I know that Selenium driver uh, had the variety of uh, lots of you know the browser. So uh, not only the uh, Chrome driver, but also we want to you know go back to the uh, Selenium driver. Did you mention still in beta 2.5 for the Windows client? Or the one that's on Windows now? Yeah, thank yes. you. Yeah. Uh, probably, well, this slide deck will be available on the, on the internet. So, uh, well, you can download. Uh, I mean, so I, I said that the uh, 120 and uh, 140 ish, uh, it's, it's not long, it actually, you know, the web operations. Yeah, so uh, click button, click the checkbox. Uh, we have the uh, lots of uh, HTML web components, right? The text to fill. And then the most of the, uh, the operation that we can imagine is already predefined. So especially Drupal, so Drupal had, had the, uh, some you know, user or role permission concept. And then uh, when we use the uh, Drupal extension, the extension library already defined, for example, automatically create anonymous, uh, create the uh, temporary user, like a simple test or PHP unit. And uh, also um, Drupal had the uh, specific concept and then we can utilize that library, and then we don't have to define uh, PHP code or write the code by ourselves. So if we don't have any Drupal extension library, we need to write the, for example, log into the Drupal site or click the uh, here and the there and check the you know, checkbox or drop down list, yeah. Uh, any other question? When you're developing your test, what, what, what are the different things that you need to write? Is it just general like parameters, positions, yeah. and list levels? Yeah. Like, what, 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 what was the reason why you needed to choose this driver rather than the Drupal driver? Yes, yeah, so this one, right? So if we don't have any, how do I say, our custom, if we don't have any our custom template, we need to fill out, you know, you can see the uh, blue words, that is uh, static words, like, uh, you know, access denied and add cloud service provider, authenticated user, cloud administrator, right? So this test scenario is static, basically. Even though we can give the parameter, the, this file itself is static. When we want to you know, make our the test code to the public into the Drupal.org, it's, it's okay, this is static you know, test scenario. But uh, what if we want to have uh, include the uh, credential, like a username and password? 
that we cannot do that. That's why we, you know, uh, we uh, implemented our custom, you know, the preprocessor uh, with the uh, bracket. And this is the uh, tweak template. So tweak is the uh, kind of a, you know, as you know, well, the front end templating system. Then I, we can put the uh, uh, secret. Yes. 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 So here uh, again, um, the bottom green box is, you know, our the private the file, including the secret, and then we give the uh, twig template into the preprocessor, and then that preprocessor generates the automatically, you know, uh, final feature file. And then the, our uh, bhat run command takes the, uh, um, this feature file from the uh, specific directory. So the preprocessor is kind of a genera generator of the uh, feature file by synthesizing the, uh, the private parameters and the tweak templates. Any other questions? Okay, thank you so much for uh, joining my session.